in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. And what do we do here? We talk about nutritional health, and Jimmy Moore gets to rant about it. We start off over on Instagram Live, so go follow me on Instagram. I'm at Livin Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you are there, you can engage in the content live, just like all of these people are doing right now. If you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours on Instagram. After 24 hours, it does disappear, so go watch the past episodes on YouTube. Type in Jimmy Rants as a keyword search. You will find the show on YouTube or a Google search. Finally, we have a Jimmy Rants podcast, which has the best of the best moments of this here show in podcast form. JimmyRants.com is the website. Today's Jimmy Rants is one of those episodes where I want to hear your questions all about keto. Now, earlier today, I put out on Instagram story uh, that I was going to be doing a big Jimmy Rance episode today, answering all kinds of questions about keto. And so I'm going to bring those up on the screen first. Um, I'm not sure you see this on YouTube, but on Instagram, it throws the question right down there. So I'm going to go right to those right now. And so if you guys watching this live have questions, Please write them in there. When I'm done going through all of the ones that came in on the story, I will get to your questions next. But this one is from Jay Marcus. He wanted to know, are macadamia nuts good as a keto snack? So the answer to your question is absolutely macadamia nuts are a great snack choice because they're very high in fat, very low in carbohydrate, they're very delicious too, by the way. So a perfect snack. Most macadamia nuts are just roasted, dry roasted. They're not roasted in any kind of bad oils, which we've talked about before. You gotta be very careful when you turn it over on the back, see how they're roasting these nuts. So macadamia nuts tend to be the better kind. I also like this nut called Peely Nuts, P-I-L-I. And so you can get those that eat peelynuts.com. They're actually much higher in fat, slightly higher, I should say, in fat than macadamia nuts. And they taste so buttery in the mouth, very low carbohydrate, very moderate protein, and very high in fat. So very good keto nuts. But I want to use this opportunity, talking about macadamia nuts as a good keto snack, to talk about snacking. Because if you're eating a well-formulated, mostly real foods-based, low-carb, moderate-protein, high-fat diet to satiety, and you're allowing your body to tell you when you've had enough food to eat, guess what happens? You don't need to snack. So the whole notion of, help me find keto snacks, Jimmy, um, is a weird one to me. Because if you feel the need to snack between meals and you had breakfast at, say, 8 o'clock in the morning, and you're already hungry again at noon? Why are you hungry again? You did one of two things. You didn't need enough fat, and or you didn't need enough total energy, calories. So the whole notion of snacking on keto, and it's so funny we have a keto snack food industry now with all these little snack products for keto, and I'm going, does anybody else think that's kind of weird? Why do you need snack products? Now, I know, I know, when you're traveling, when you're on the go, it's a nice little quickie little thing. But in the day-to-day -day of doing your keto, do you really need to snack? No. No, you don't. Eat adequate calories. Eat enough fat. 
minimize the carbohydrates, and your body should very easily go 8, 10, 12, maybe even up to 24 hours between meals, and it's no big deal. So I'm not a big fan of keto snacking, but thank you for your question. All right, here's a question. What do you do with supplements? Where do you begin and end with supplements? I've been reading such conflicting info. So I don't know what the conflicting info is on supplements, but here's my philosophy. Figure out what your need is. So let's say you're deficient in potassium, okay? So if you're not able to get enough potassium or you don't have enough potassium coming into your body, you can make the choice of whether you're going to choose to supplement for potassium or to try to find foods that are loaded with potassium. And it's real easy, you guys, if you discover that you're missing some uh, essential element that you want in your in your diet, it's very easy to do a Google search. Just type in uh, potassium foods and up will come this big list of all of these foods you can have. And then on that list, find the ones that are the most keto. Now, if you bring up uh, potassium foods, you're going to see bananas on there. But guess what? You're going to see really, really high on the list. You're going to see avocados. Avocados are the most potassium rich supplement uh, uh, or potassium rich food there is that you don't need to supplement. Most of the supplements for potassium, by the way, only allow up to 99, uh, whatever the units are, 99. Whereas one whole avocado has about 1,100 of that same one. So my philosophy is try to get it from food first, okay? So if you're eating a well-rounded, uh, nutrient-dense um, type of diet, and I even talk about like within the context of real food, trying to choose better quality, this is why choosing better quality foods is so vitally important. When you choose organic uh, and grass-fed and all of this kind of pastured, all this terminology, you should think in your head micronutrients. You should think in your head nature's vitamin. Because if you look at food in that way, you want to choose the best quality. It's not about a, I can't afford it. There's a lot of people that buy conventional meat, for example, and then they go down to the vitamin shop and they're spending all this money on all these different kinds of vitamins. And what I'm saying is use that money you're spending on the vitamins on real whole good quality food. And that includes getting some of the odd bits. So beef heart, uh, liver, brain, all of these things become a very healthy part of your diet so that you don't need to take supplements. Now, that said, there are some people who do need to take certain supplements for certain conditions. If you have blood sugar that's all wackadoodle, maybe you try berberine. Uh, if you are have the MTHFR gene mutation, you might need to do a methylated form of folate. There are so many variables to this question of where do you begin and end with supplements. There are a lot of people that all they have to do is eat real whole foods that are nutrient dense and they're gonna get all the supplements they need. There are other people who are going to need to supplement their real whole foods based diet with good quality supplements. Now I am a little bit biased. I do have a supplement company where we make supplements, ketoliving.com. We have a general uh, keto essentials multivitamin which we include a whole lot of different things. Vitamin D is something that people are notoriously deficient in, so we include that in sufficient amounts in there. We do have the uh, methylated folate for MTHFR. We do have blood sugar controlling types of things in there. It's a well-rounded one if you're keto, uh, and it's iron-free as well, because when you eat keto, you don't, uh, you don't need a lot more iron because you're eating a lot of iron-based foods. Um, so go check that out, you guys. And that's kind of where I am on the subject of supplements. All right, Andrea has this question. What are your views on keto and IGF-1? So IGF-1, insulin growth factor is what that stands for. It is one of the inflammation markers in the body. 
And when you're trying to build muscle, IGF-1 is something you want to have a little bit higher. Um, but it's also an inflammatory response. You don't want it super duper dippity high. You want to kind of make sure it's in a safe range. And so keto is an anti-inflammatory diet. So the way that is reflected is in the IGF-1. It's reflected in the high sensitivity C-reactive protein. That's another blood test you can ask your doctor for, HSCRP. It also will show up in homocysteine levels. So those are three key inflammatory markers. But the, the person asked about IGF-1. It should lower it. It should lower it. And if you're an exerciser while keto, it may transiently go higher to deal with that um, and to give you the benefits that having higher IGF-1 temporarily will do. But in general, it will lower inflammation levels. Now, if you want to nerd out a little more on IGF-1, my podcast that aired today, the Keto Hacking MD podcast, where we shared the blood test results about my keto carnivore experiment, Go to llvlc.com and you can listen to that episode where my co-host, Dr. John Lemansky, a medical doctor, helped me look at a lot of these uh, test results and we nerded out on IGF-1 for a little while. So go check that out. BB wants to know, I'm having extremely vivid dreams lately. Is this a keto thing? which is so funny to me because I remember the first time I started hearing people talk about, oh, I went low carb keto and I started having these really vivid dreams and it's kind of scary how real they seemed. And it's a thing though. It is a thing. And here's my, here's what I'm thinking is going on. I think because your body is not having to deal with all of the crappy garbage anymore, that your brain is actually getting a reboot, that your brain is is being energized to a level that it's never been energized before. And what that vivid dreaming is doing is helping to store memories, to help you expand your, your knowledge base. Because I too have experienced this. I don't have to go to a movie theater anymore because the theater in my mind at night is so incredibly interesting um, that, that is kind of fun, but I do know that pe some people talk about they get vivid nightmares and that's no fun unless you like horror movies, but, uh, no Freddy Krueger in my dreams, I suppose. But yes, this is something, uh, scientists have not vetted this out yet as to why it happens, but it is really interesting that, yeah, people do report that they get vivid dreams when they go keto. Richard wants to know, are there any tips on breaking a keto fat loss plateau? We've dropped our carbs down to 20 grams or less. We've added in intermittent fasting. What else? Oh, you're just getting started if that's all you're doing. First of all, though, I would want to know what are you doing on your keto? Because if you are eating insufficient calories, you will stall your weight. I know that seems so counterintuitive. How is eating less calories going to stall your weight? But if your body's never getting sufficient energy, it's going to rebel against you. It's going to lower your set point. And so if you do that, you're not going to lose weight. So eat adequate calories. I would also say make sure that you've got your carb tolerance dialed in. So maybe you think you're eating keto and maybe you're having 50 grams of carbs. Now, I don't know about this with Richard, but he probably is having 20 to 30 or whatever his, his carb tolerance is. So let's assume that's good. Let's also assume that there's no uh, stress going on in your life because stress will be the saboteur of any good fat loss program. So people like to put the onus on the diet, but if you stop and think about it, diet is just but one element that controls your weight. I think the number one reason why people hang on to weight uh, beyond eating a crappy diet is stress. And so if you're if you're eating your stress, which a lot of people do, um, you're going to have weight on the body. And so letting go of the stress is a big one. Not exercising, not doing some kind of a movement routine also will make 
uh, fat loss plateau. Now I know Richard does a lot of running because he's always posting uh, videos of himself listening to my audiobooks. So I know he does exercise. Uh, what about your sleep, Richard? I wonder, are you sleeping well? Are you getting a good solid amount of sleep, a good solid quality of sleep? Those things matter too. Um, and then finally, uh, you drop carbs to 20, but eat enough fat to be satiated and that will burn stored body fat. You said you're intermittent fasting, but I wonder if doing some periods of extended fasting would be helpful as well. I also wonder if you did some HIIT workout instead of just uh, steady state running like you do. I wonder if you did bursts of, of HIIT, like sprints, where you go all out for 30 seconds and then recuperate for a minute and all out for 30 seconds, that that would help move the needle on fat loss. I would also want to know uh, if you do any kind of stress management types of things, like a yoga class, uh, infrared sauna, anything like that. There's so many things you could try, Richard. I definitely hope uh, that we've given you some ideas to think about. Uh, pa -pa -pa -pa. All right, so that was all the questions that I had from my Instagrammers that uh, sent me questions through there. So let's see what my live people have to say. Welcome in. If you're just joining us, we are doing a special Q&A session for keto here on this episode of Jimmy Rants. I've gone through all the ones that were on Instagram story, and now I wanna see what you guys have to say. Jag PC went on keto. What do you do about leg cramps that come and go? Well, they should not be a thing. Here's how you take care of leg cramps. So leg cramps are a severe deficiency in your electrolytes. And I sound like a broken record, but I'm going to say this again and again and again till people understand it. When you go keto, your body dumps electrolytes. So electrolytes are stored in the muscles, so all over your body in the muscles, you have water. In the water, you have sugar, which is what it's dumping, but you also have salt, potassium, magnesium, and some other micronutrients. So what do you do? You have to replenish all of those electrolytes. I used to get really bad Charlie horse leg cramps to no end. My wife, Christine, will tell you, I would wake up in the middle of the night screaming when I was on the Atkins diet 15 years ago because I was writhing in such pain. And what I did not know at the time because I was salt phobic was I needed more salt. So get you some good salt, uh, not Morton's salt. That's not real salt. Get you some sea salt um, and you'll see. It makes a big difference. And then make sure you're getting potassium like we talked about earlier. You can eat a half of an avocado and get plenty of potassium. Take a magnesium supplement like my magnesium glycinate about an hour before bedtime. It will actually help you sleep. And then drink, drink, and drink some more water. That should make those leg cramps completely disappear. Uh, Josh says, I've hit a point in my lifestyle where the only time I'm not thinking about food is when I'm fasting. So what's up with that? Uh, no, I'm not thinking of garbage. I think I might just be bored. That's funny that you're bored when you're eating, but when you're fasting, uh, you're not thinking about food at all. That is really fascinating, Josh. Um, and a lot of this head stuff is really hard to wrap your head around. Um, especially when you come from an eating background like you and I have, it is really fascinating when you stop and look at the mechanics of it all. Why do we think about food? And I can tell you, Josh, it gets better over time. Since I've been doing this keto carnivore, I literally don't even think about food until it's time to go to the kitchen and get something to eat. And then when I have that something to eat, I cook it up, I eat it, and I'm done with food. Uh, food has become secondary in my life. Whereas for a lot of people, it's always been first and foremost. People are eating breakfast. What are we going to eat for lunch? To have lunch. What are we going to have for dinner? You know, and we're always planning everything about our lives around the food in our lives. And I just, I just hope that everybody can get to that point in their lifestyle where it's not this constant thinking about food. Hang in there, buddy. You're doing great. <laughs> Uh, Tracy says, I have to be very careful with little gems. I can slip into indulgence 
quite easily. Oh, with the, the keto snack foods, yes. They are very, it's a slippery slope. Tra uh, Tracy says, when I'm on carnivore, I don't snack. Yeah, I was just at this conference this last weekend, uh, the uh, Metabolic Health Summit in Long Beach, California, and there were so many companies there with snack products, and I had I stayed away from them because probably 95 to 99 percent of them were not animal foods, so it kind of easily kept me away from that. If I'm going to snack uh, when I'm carnivore, keto carnivore, it'll be like pork rinds with pimento cheese on it, um, beef sticks, that kind of thing. Uh, Nestor wants to know how many milligrams should be taken of vitamin B1. Well, I'm not going to give you any advice on what dosing you should have for any specific vitamin. Uh, I would just take a general good uh, B complex vitamin and you'll probably get all the B1 that you need from that. Also, pick up a copy of Real Food Keto because in there, uh, my wife Christine and I wrote that book, we go into all the different micronutrients, B1 being one of them, and you can learn more about what the role of B1 is in the body, how you can get more of it in the foods that you eat. So go check that out, realfoodketo.com. Uh, Live and Listen Healthy says, my snack is butter. It's so funny. I was at a conference, uh, a little small get-together keto at the cabin a couple weeks ago in Cincinnati with my friend Jessica Ty. And uh, the ladies that were there as part of the group, they're like, what do you mean eat butter? <laughs> so I go to the fridge and I grab the Kerrygold and I you know, walk off like a, a tablespoon and I just stick it right in my mouth and they're all like, oh. I'm like, what's the big deal, people? You drink cream in your coffee, right? That's all butter is. It's just solidified cream. It's so funny. But I do that too, Liz. Uh, T Brand, th I love what you're doing. Thank you. It sure helps. You're very welcome. Thank you for being here. Ashton says, I think snacking is something we got used to on the SAD diet since our food intake was not satiating us. I'll go one step further. It was something we got used to on every low-fat diet we've ever done because they encouraged it. Oh, you eat your breakfast and you're hungry an hour later. Well, you better have a snack. And that snack will regulate your blood sugar and keep your hunger under control by snacking. And I'm going, no, snacking means you've got hunger. Get rid of the snacking, eat more fat and calories than the previous meal, then the snacking's gone. Uh, Sam says, avocado all day. Absolutely, Sam, you know. Holly says, I take a senior multivitamin, and those are probably pretty good, so. Uh, quite contrary says, hi, Jimmy, I'm confused about measurements, grams, ounces, percentages. How do I easily figure it out if I'm having enough fat or too much protein. Um, honestly, I'm not a big, big fan of worrying about the math of it all. I think this is where the keto community has confused the general public because you talk about grams, nobody knows what grams in America means. The, the, the rest of the world, they know grams, but it's a different kind of grams than what we talk about in America. So it's really confusing, confusing. Ounces is a little more solidified. You can kind of visualize ounces. A five ounce steak is about the size of your hand. Percentages, I don't like percentages because they're based on calories and I don't want you to just arbitrarily pick calories. So I posted this meme this morning on my social media pages of one, two, three, simple keto. We need to keep it simple. Choose fatty proteins. So if you do fatty proteins, things like uh, pork belly, steak, like 7327 ground beef, bacon, uh, sausage, those kinds of things. Those are going to be very fatty protein sources that you can consume. You could throw in, if you can have dairy, throw in cheese uh, in there as well because it's kind of a uh, one-to-one -one ratio of fat to protein um, in the macronutrients. So those are like the fatty proteins. And so if you're getting enough of that, and then you're adding to that, if you're not doing keto carnivore like I am, add to that 
non-starchy vegetables. So green leafy vegetables, um, like spinach, kale, that kind of thing, salad greens. Uh, also add in broccoli, cauliflower, squash, really any non-starchy vegetable, green beans. And then add fat to that. So butter, lard, coconut oil, ghee, tallow, all of these things are going to be a healthy part. And I just think if we just keep it that simple, we take the math games out of it, how much more freer would it feel to do keto under that auspice? And I can sense that people get overwhelmed by all the macro, I got to hit my macronutrient ratio, which you guys know I loathe that. I, I need to make sure I've got enough fat grams, so I need to eat this like pure unadulterated fat to get my fat calories up. And then how do you know if you're eating too much protein or not? I say just don't go out of your way to eat a big 20 ounce porterhouse steak. Have a five ounce steak, some vegetables, put some butter on top of the steak and the vegetables, and, and you're good to go. I, I think we try to make this harder than it really is. At the end of the day, you're just eating real food. And if you're still hungry after doing that, eat a little more. This isn't hard. And yet people want to make it hard. They want to make it a diet. You're not dieting anymore. You're now living. I want you to live La Vida Low Carb. See what I did there? TJ Schwingle says, Vivid dreams. We must burn off fat cells in our brains. Loosen those memories. I like that. Uh, hello, Alterna Sweets. Thanks for being here. I ran out of Alterna Sweets ketchup. Uh, I was going to make Christine uh, this dish that had it, and I, I I ran out today, so I'm sad. But I got another shipment coming soon on the auto ship, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Stress is a killer, says Alterna Sweets. It is. It is. It's no, it's no fun. Uh, I don't think about food anymore either. It's just so wonderful. That's the beautiful thing. You don't think about food. Once you're very well fat adapted, keto adapted, feeling good, getting all those satiating effects that keto gives you, you just don't think about food. Somebody posted uh, on my one, two, three, easy, simple keto that I did today. She posted, well, I still dream about Frosted Flakes. I said, well, it, if you uh, dream about Frosted Flakes, when that hits you, go eat bacon and eggs. And then when you dream about Frosted Flakes the next time, go eat bacon and eggs. Because after a while of eating that way, you're not going to dream about Frosted Flakes anymore. You're going to think they're gross. You're going to think they're the sugary, grainy, crappy garbage that I do now. It just takes time. Uh, Tanilla says, can I eat the same foods every day over and over again? There is this whole idea of mono eating where you eat basically the same foods i love to mono eat but let me give you a word of warning when you eat the same exact foods time after time day after day you have a propensity for developing a food a food sensitivity so i'll give you an example uh, about a year and a half two years ago i got a food sensitivity test and it came back five times off the charts high for egg yolks and egg whites. Now, those of you that follow me regularly, you know I have 26 backyard chickens. And so they give me unlimited amounts of eggs every single day. And so I used to eat probably six-ish eggs a day from my chickens. Well, guess what happened? From eating those every single day, day in, day out, week after week, I developed this very high sensitivity to the eggs. So I had to give them up for six months. That ended uh, right about October was the end of the six months. And I started adding them back in. And now I have them about every four to five days. So there is an argument for kind of changing things up, switching things around in your keto foods just to prevent that food allergy thing uh, or food sensitivity thing from popping up. Uh, George says, tip spray magnesium oil will give immediate relief. Still need to supplement as Jimmy recommends. Yes, absolutely. 
for the leg cramps is what he's talking about. Uh, how do I get back on track? I messed up eating Chinese food. It was really, really, really good. But today I feel really, really, really bad today and guilty. Well, Medusa, first of all, don't feel guilty. You made the choice that that's what you wanted to do. Now you're living with that choice, uh, good, bad, or ugly. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, right back on plan again. Whenever I eat that kind of food, I'm always starving an hour later because it's not satiating to me. It's a high volume of food with a low level of satiety. So I would say uh, eat lots of fat today to start getting that back in your system. Um, it would be very difficult to fast on a day like this, so don't fast. Get keto adapted again, then maybe throw in some periods of fasting and you'll get right back on track again really fast. Sharon wants to know, do you think protein bars such as Quest and Costco protein bars can hinder your progress even though they're low carb? Well, I would argue, Sharon, they are not low carb. Uh, the Quest company was actually at uh, that Metabolic Health Summit conference. They were one of the, the vendors and they had a big display. And you pick up a Quest bar, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna rock the keto world, but get ready, you guys. They're not keto. 27 grams of carbohydrate, 21 grams of protein, and no fat? In no sense of the word, is that a keto bar? Now, I've never seen the Costco protein bars. The only thing I can think of is they play the net carb game, and you guys know I'm all about total carbohydrates. So if you're gonna be intellectually honest about your carb tolerance level, you have to count total carbs. And in that realm, the Quest bars are no bueno. So hard no yes they will hinder your progress uh what's good for sweet craving so Jessica 23 thank you for this question if you have sweet cravings there's obviously things that you can make out there packaged products that you can buy out there to, to satisfy your sweet craving but what I want to know is why do you crave sweets uh, if you just started keto, I understand why you crave sweets. If you've been keto for more than a few months and you're supposed to be keto adapted, I want to know what is it about the need for having a sweet taste on your tongue? Because one of the things that happens as you go keto and as your body becomes fat fueled is you find you don't need sweet. And you find that the, the natural sweetness that is in foods that are completely keto comes out. I remember the first time I had raw almonds for the first time after being keto adapted. And I was like, holy crap, almonds are sweet. I had no idea almonds were sweet. I had almonds over the years, never once thought of them as sweet. I can't even eat a strawberry now because it's way too sweet on my tongue. So the question becomes, how do you get to that point where you don't desire the sweet? It just takes time. And it takes your body getting used to and desiring the taste of fat more than the taste of sweet. And it happens. Give yourself time. But in the meantime, I would encourage you just to find the natural sweetness that's in the foods that you eat. And if it means having a few blueberries with some like 85% dark chocolate, then so be it. Let that be your sweet. Retraining your palate is so critical. And remember, you guys, I come from the sweet tooth of all sweet tooths. I don't think you probably know anybody in your life that used to drink 16 cans of Coca-Cola a day, that used to eat boxes of Little Debbie snack cakes, boxes at a time, that used to just, I would stuff anything in my mouth simply because I thought I needed something sweet on the tongue. And the ironic thing was, all that sweetness was not sweet to me after a while. And once I went keto, now even thinking about any of that stuff is just repulsive to me. Uh, Mongol Hustle, I saw you on Tom Bilyeu's Impact Theory. Well, thank you. Thank you for being, being there and watching it. I had a lot of fun with Tom. He's a cool dude, by the way. Uh, tall Redhead, great podcast today, Jimmy. Thank you. So yes, if you missed it, 
the Keto Hacking MD podcast, we did talk about the blood test results of my keto carnivore experiment. Really fascinating, uh, unpredictable results. Go and listen, llvlc.com. I'm late. I was listening to today's podcast on your blood test results. Thank you, Alberto. So yes, if you're just joining us, we are doing a general Q&A about keto. I started off with some questions that I got from my Instagram stories, people, and now I'm answering general questions. Tall Redhead is asking about allulose, says that she reacts to it. So those of you that are new to this, allulose is a sweetener uh, that has not been approved by the FDA yet. And I got to be honest with you guys. I have been approached by several companies that have made products with allulose in them. Uh, I'm not going to name their names because you know who they are if you're in this space. And they wanted to throw a lot of money at me to promote their products. And I'm going, okay, here, here's what happens. It's got allulose in it. They pretend like it doesn't count, Okay. But on the label for that product, it says 36 grams of carbohydrate. But here's where it gets really tricky with allulose. It says 32 grams of sugar. Now, if you saw Jimmy Moore promoting a product with 36 grams of carbohydrate, 32 grams of sugar on the label, and it says allulose, are you going to think I've lost my cotton pick in mind? Yes. Yes, you will. Um, And that's the problem with allulose. Maybe it's a good sweetener for keto. Maybe it won't impact your blood sugar, even though Tall Redhead said uh, she had a reaction to it. Um, I'm assuming you mean blood sugar reaction. But I can't ethically promote something like that until the FDA gives the stamp of approval. So that's the problem. So if you guys see these companies out there promoting their allulose sweetened products, buyer beware. Until it's been vetted out a little bit, I would not be real confident in that. Now, I'm willing to be convinced. If you're watching this and you're an allulose company or you know a lot about allulose, please write to me, jimmy at llvlc.com. More than happy to hear you, but nobody's convinced me Uh, especially with the labeling of this right now, that it's anything but a very bad thing. And talk about confusing to a newbie keto person. They pick up this product. It's supposed to be keto. They hear me talking about read your label. So they start reading the label. Holy crap, 36 grams of carbs. Holy crap, 32 grams of sugar. What is this Jimmy Moore dude telling me if I start promoting something like that? You, You guys see where I'm going with this? Uh, Tall Redhead said it makes her crave sweets. So, yeah. Uh, Sharon says, I'm going to do total carbs from now on. Fairly new. I need to lose about 40 pounds. Recommendations for total carbs a day. Thank you for all you do. Uh, So, there's no general recommendation for everybody. And without knowing, like, how insulin resistant you are, not knowing uh, a lot of things about you, Sharon, it's very difficult. I will tell you what we said in my book, keto clarity. If you want to start off at a starting number, count 20 grams of total carbohydrate. Make that the starting point. Maybe you can tolerate more. Maybe you actually need a little bit less, but start with 20. 40 might uh, be a little high. Oh, 40 pounds is what you said. So you're asking what the total. So 20 grams of total carbs is what I would recommend. (coughs) Cashmere Fancy, where can I find the podcast discussing your blood test results from the carnivore plan? Thank you for that. LLVLC.com. We have uh, all of my podcasts are all under one roof. It's the Keto Hacking MD podcast. And as of the recording of this live, it is available LLVLC.com. It should be the very top result. Or you can go look up Keto Hacking MD podcast on wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever. I rarely add any sweetener to my treats anymore. And see, Dory knows. Dory, you've done this a while. And when you've done keto for a while, you really don't desire sweet. I'm still shocked I can't put a strawberry in my mouth without having it blow my head off from it being so sweet. 
Keto Cricket says Keto Connect did a blood sugar test on allulose and it had no impact. I thought it was interesting. It's still a chemical that's man-made. Well, I did see that with Matt and Mega that they did test allulose and it didn't impact them. But I still would say you have to be a wise consumer for your own body. Because just because it reacts in one famous person online's body in a certain way doesn't mean it's going to react in everybody that same way. So that's why I'm holding off on doing anything with any allulose kind of products. How do we order at Starbucks, says Gus. Sometimes I crave a latte or a mocha. Uh, Americana. That's that's the easiest way to do it. It's mostly heavy cream. Um, if you allow for sweeteners of any kind, you can put a little bit of sugar-free whatever sweetener. They usually have sugar-free vanilla. Um, that's what Christine likes is the sugar-free vanilla. And then a shot of espresso. Um Americana, that's what you order at Starbucks. I hate coffee, but that's what I hear everybody likes to order. Uh, Gerald, I mentioned about weight plateaus earlier, so go back and watch the replay. Um, we, we answered that question very thoroughly a little bit earlier. All right, guys, so that's it for this keto Q&A session. Thanks for hanging out with me here on Jimmy Rants. I try to do these from time to time because whenever I do my regular Jimmy Rants, people inevitably always go off topic of the pin post. I always point down, that's not what we're talking about. But today was a general open question, so you guys had a lot of really great questions. And yes, I still sound horrible from this cold. I feel good. I don't have the fever anymore, but I have a cold still, so it's not he knows. Susan says, just recently had a bad experience with sweetener. Uh, not knocking me out of ketosis, but definitely lowered my numbers and made me starving. Yeah, that's the thing. I would challenge people who think they don't have an addiction to sweeteners to give up all sweet tasting anything for 30 days. I did this a little over a decade ago. I called it a 30-day sweet-free challenge where you literally have nothing sweet on the tongue. Not artificial, not sugary, not natural foods, not anything that would be sweet on the tongue. So it's all savory all the time for 30 days. Do you think you could do that? Would that be cool? I would love to issue that challenge here and hear people share their results because I think it would be fascinating for you to discover just how reliant on sweet taste you really are. I think, uh, I think you'd be surprised. Randy says, I really enjoyed this Q&A. Do this more. Yeah, I try to do these. I've done Q&As before on the Jimmy Rants. All right, guys. So today's general Q&A for keto. And nobody asks any questions. So that's why I don't do it real often. Uh, Jessica says, 30 days. All right, Jessica, I'll give you a break. How about half of that? Do it for 15 days. You do it for 15 days. I just want to see... If you learn anything about yourself by giving up the taste of sweet, which includes if you drink diet soda, that's sweet, which includes any fruit, that's sweet, includes anything that would be sweet on your tongue and just have savory foods, I think it would be really interesting to see how you do. Uh, I've been sweetener free for a year. I got in trouble with keto bars, says Susan. So Susan found out. The hard way, I suppose. So... <laughs> All right, guys, that is it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. And we start off on Instagram, do these a couple of times every single day. And by the way, I'm loaded for bear with a lot more stuff to talk about uh, here in the coming days. So stay tuned, you guys. Uh, so go follow me on Instagram at Living Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you are there, you can engage in the content live, just like all of these beautiful people right here did today. If you're watching this on the replay, thanks for watching Jimmy Rant. So thanks for being here. You can also watch it for up to 24 hours on replay. You can also watch it on YouTube. So go over to YouTube, type in Jimmy Rants or a Google search, type in Jimmy Rants. You will find the show. Finally, we have a Jimmy Rants podcast, which has the best of the best moments of this here show in podcast form. It's on Apple Podcast as well as Stitcher. Go leave us a review there, you guys. 
jimmyrants.com has links to all of the ways that you can access this show. So guys, until next time, we'll see you then.